and Tilly, John Tilly and Karen, you're setting a standard. Watch out. You're staying for the whole meeting. No, I've got to go. I've got another meeting coming up in two. So. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, you're, you're, set, you're setting a standard for your other seven members. Watch out. Okay, we are back here, um, only a couple of minutes behind what we thought we would be, and um, the first item up on a full stomach is town clerk. Let's go talk about elections. You, you have a full stomach. <laughs> oh, could you get him some potato chips, please? <laughs> I'm a, I'll be okay. We're going to start on um, page one with the town clerk's salary. Take it away. All right. I did not crank that one up. <laughs> um, so, despite my desire to, um, the big, the big change here is the part-time position, um, going from a twelve, uh, going up twelve hours a week from what we currently have, because what we currently have is not working. Um, <laughs> as evidenced by me having to run up here in the middle and not being able to be here all day <laughs> and support the other department heads and that sort of stuff like I would like to. Um, you know, essentially it boils down to, um, Anne is retiring, you know, and wants to get away from this, which is what's prompting it. Um, and I started thinking about it and we just need more time of people. I'm averaging somewhere near 60 hours a week and, um, that's too much and what's what's going on in my office is not sustainable <laughs> right now and eventually will have a bad end for somebody most likely me um, so the reasons that I want to do this is you know despite the regulations that are coming down on us from above shall we say DMV is going to kick a bunch more plates to us that we didn't previously deal with that we will now um, the right to know stuff. Um, I mean, if somebody wanted to with a right to know, they could take my office out for a week and that keeps me up at night. <laughs> um, and we just don't have enough people to respond to something like that. Um, obviously elections is also a changing beast <laughs> from what it was even when I started um, there's way more oversight the stuff that we need to do there on the high-end level is astronomical compared to what it used to be um, we will we will probably see a little bit of population growth at some point and I'm the one that that hits first um, so you know whether it's twin pines and continuum or it's the next thing that comes along there will be some and I'm not saying double but I'm saying modest up in terms of that and then every person that you put here you know it's just from birth certificates to death certificates and everything in between so adding more people adds an exponential amount of work on our end um, it also brings in more money which is good um, <laughs> the other things you know I, I have a lot of stuff that I'm not getting to that I would like to be able to get to um, some examples of that are re the records retention thing really doesn't happen as often as it should <laughs> am I good <laughs> okay um, yeah, so the records retention doesn't happen like it would. I should personally be getting some more certifications, like a state of New Hampshire certification that's a week in August for four years. Um, and I, I just doing that on top of what we already do is not something that we can do in the current setup. Um, you know, and then, you know, it's just, it's staff overload and burnout. I mean, Diane and I are carrying just under 500 hours of vacation time. <laughs> um, and then plus I've got a boatload of sick time as does she. Um, so we're just, we're not able to take that like we should. Um, and I think that's important and nobody wants anybody to burn out. So, and I want to be able as we go forward to continue what I think is the high service that we provide in our office. I mean, I think, you know, what, what we do in there is above and beyond what a lot of other places are. 
And that's great, and I like that, and that's how I believe the residents want it to be. Um, but it's just becoming, we're doing more than we ever used to. I mean, a town clerk 20 years ago versus what I'm doing, they would laugh at some of the stuff that I'm doing, but here we are in time. So, so that's, the, that's the basic of the additional ask for money in the town clerk budget. Um, there are a couple other what I would term uneventful things in there. Um, you know, the office supplies went up by $300 because, well, because the company that we get the subscription from figured out they'd been charging us wrong for seven years or so, and they've been charging us half of what they should have. And when we went to update that, they finally figured that out. So I guess we can look at the fact that we got a good deal on that for a little while. Um, but that's why the $300 up under the supply category. Um, so that sort of concludes the town clerk portion of it. Okay, so you weren't here, Will, but what we do is we're, we're see if we have questions and then move on. Uh, BB? Yeah, get that on mic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll repeat myself. I wholeheartedly agree in this increase in Will's budget. He needs the extra help. I, I get worried for Will's health, actually, as do others in the community, and we can't lose him. I have a lot of concerned work moms. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, so uh, I don't have any other questions other than just to state that I would support this 100%. Where are you going to put the person? <laughs> In our lovely new office. <laughs> so you're not thinking of doing this until the wall's been torn down and that's sort of thing? He's got to wait well, i got to wait for the budget. So I'm, I'm under the assumption that the wall's down, et cetera, or whatever happens to the whole building will happen by the time <laughs> we get there or close to it. So we're, we're 18 months away from, yeah. I know. Can you make it for 18 months without... Additional staff? Um, yes. I mean, it would be better if we could slide somebody in there before. And I fully know that this is going to be a hard find. <laughs> um, and it's going to take a lot of digging on our part. Um, because it's not, while I advertise it as 20 hours a week, it, it, with being vacation coverage, there's 40-hour weeks. And then there's a couple weeks of nothing. And that sort of stuff. But what's happening now with Anne is she's not able to cover the shifts that we need to because she's working 12 other jobs. Um, not really 12, but <laughs> a fair amount. Um, so when we try and do something, like I can't take every other Monday because Lynn needs her for payroll so that we get paid. And I wouldn't want to ever not get paid <laughs> because I had Anne in my office. Um, and we try and do as much sharing as we can, um, you know, in terms of having Anne down in my office while doing some stuff for Lynn and that sort of stuff. And it's, it's not ideal. I think Lynn would agree that she needs somebody dedicated and I need somebody dedicated to do this correctly. Um, it's just too much. And also the fact that Anne doesn't want to do it anymore and I don't, there's not many more people that would fall into that category where it could work and that sort of stuff. Um, so I think we're going to have to separate there. Okay. So, so you, you've mentioned um, one of Ann's other jobs. And if I t add together what the two of you are looking for in terms of part-time, that's 32 hours a week between the two of you with, with the, your addition, Lynn, and with your addition, Will. <coughs> Is this morphing quickly into a full-time person? Because you say it's going to be hard to find. I, I, I would full -time think person I'm trying very time. hard for it not to be a full-time. Quite honestly, I started off at a full-time person that would include some audio video stuff. <laughs> that's, you know, I, I can only do so much, but then I decided to back off of a full-time request and go to a half. I think I can be good with the half time. But you can uh, be, but but I, I'm now taking two to part. Lynn's right. got 12 and wants to go to 14. No, I have 10, 10 and want to go, go to 12. 12. Correct. 12 plus uh, uh, 20, 20 is 32. Right, but 
That's all. That's a full time person. Correct, but that it becomes more complicated than than that. In that, if he needs them for a full week, I lose them for a full week. Whereas, and that's very hard to give somebody defined responsibilities when you're going to lose them randomly or so that's why I think that the part time splitting it right now we share Anne and it doesn't always work well so I think splitting it between two part time positions and each of us getting our own person would help well and certainly fiscally that makes a lot more sense because mm -hmm. then we don't yeah, have I'm, the, I'm trying to stay away from the benefits and all know, that the obviously. overload of, of, of that but I asked the question the way I did is this going to morph into a full-time person because we've talked at times that the town administrator needs some help also and uh, are we going to be able to meet all of these needs and you just mentioned audiovisual you and you and Adam are really good at it so maybe we don't need to but <laughs> oh sorry um, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I, I don't see my time needs go if I can get to this level I don't see my time needs changing much for going up from there, um, I mean, so so, which is why I was going it, for the part-time. It is clearly uh, beneficial from a benefits, lack of benefits point of view to go the route you all are talking about. Yeah. Now, whether but, you but could does, does combine board, Kim's right? and you know, hers, I don't know. <laughs> but Charlie Kelsey's left the room, but all of Charlie Kelsey's questions earlier this morning, are we eventually looking at needing another person in the town offices to cover all these part-time jobs you're saying no I don't know that it needs to be one full-time person but we but the town offices definitely need help <laughs> um, we are not we, running uh, efficiently I hear, I hear that but I'm asking you a, um, a, a question that's just over the around the corner which is is this going to this you're saying clearly this will not morph into a full-time person with benefits. I do not need a full-time third person in my office and you're happy sticking with your own separate part-time person. I am, and I think 12, 12 hours gives me a, the chance to have somebody regularly and have them have their own defined duties, which will alleviate some of what I'm trying to handle. And I don't see mine morphing into any more than that for the foreseeable future. And how does this do with your It needs? would be good, and we did, the three of us did talk about could we get one full-time person to work in both their offices, but it's not possible for the reasons they both just pointed out, which is they need the person at the same time. Um, could we at some point have sort of a, an executive assistant slash uh, <coughs> assistant to the finance officer? Yeah, I can see that coming sooner than Will's gonna need a third time, third full-time person. And it's very, very, very difficult to get part-time people as we all know. Yep. Um, and now, now we're looking for two. <laughs> That's, it, you know, it's gonna three, be tough. Three, because you're looking for a welfare person. <clears throat> Right. Well, we have we have a welfare officer right now. So, but we may need somebody if she does not want that position. We'd have to look for someone else. We continue to have the issue of recording. We have assigned that to the office staff, but that brings on challenges as well because they have to put aside some of their office work. Um, and we continue to look for somebody. But getting part-time people for these, especially these random times, will may need somebody for two weeks at forty hours a week, and then a couple of weeks at a couple of days I mean it's going to be tough so yeah these all of these needs are, are tough if we could have one person to share in the office that would be ideal but finding that one person is the tough well part. I'm not sure it would be ideal from a fiscal point of view but you know, <coughs> Charlie's back now so he can hear that I'm raising this quite long term <laughs> I mean question. ideal as far as service to the community um, service uh, support to staff it would be ideal there it would be additional uh, the benefits would be additional cost, obviously. Yeah. BB, questions? Anything? No. Nope. I've beaten that horse. Yep, I think so. Something, <laughs> to, think, something to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible to me, Will, to see what what you have taken on, and it just scares me that either the, these all new requirements, or was your predecessor really doing so little don't don't answer that no comment yeah <laughs> okay okay um on to um on to elections then i guess is next huh there's a carnival for you <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah with elections um we 
Lynn, myself, and Kim sort of decided to shift some things around. So we're getting rid of the ballot machine expense and poll pads and replacing it with election equipment and programming and election programming and support going forward just because as we need more things, I mean, for 50 years it was the ballot machine and <laughs> nothing else, but now we're branching into some more technology, so it makes more sense to have it be more general. Um, as far as the election equipment, what's in there this year, I had intended to be sitting here asking for new ballot booths, but we're not doing that <laughs> um, because of the fact that the state has come up with a new law that we need to provide an accessible voting system for our voters. Um, which is to the tune of about $7,000 for that, um, plus programming, um, which I'll talk about in just a second. So, um, and this is not something we have an option on. Um, this is something the state says we shall do. <laughs> um, so, what? Well, here's the thing. Um, no, right now. But they also said they probably wouldn't pay for a ballot machine and we, they wound up giving us $3,500. So I have to go in with the assumption that they're not going to give us money. However, my pea brain says that if it's an accessible voting system, there should out in the world be money somewhere for something like that, that they could tap into. Um, whether they do or not, and we actually see it on the other end, I don't know. But in my case, I got a plan for the worst case scenario where we get nothing, and if something happens, then it's better than we thought. But where it's a requirement of us, I got to put it in there as full tilt. Um, and it's, can you explain what it is, an accessible? It is the voting machine vote? that sits in that back corner room. Um, and it, for all intents and purposes, it's a tablet um, with a printer hooked up to it. And you can, in headphones, so hearing impairment, um, you know, any sort of physical disability, okay. you can do it with touch. You yeah. can do it um, with moving cursors around on it and that sort of stuff. Um, and it's, it's a very neat system. Um, it, it also, now I'm going to kind of slip into the programming a little bit. When they, when they did the law for this, um, they didn't talk about the programming fee um, until just recently. Um, why that didn't happen, I'm not sure. But um, in what you're looking at, elections and programming and support, I believe I'm going to need to increase that by $2,000, but I'm not going to put that number in there officially until I have more confidence as to what that number is actually going to be, because that's a number that's been floated in some user groups and that sort of stuff. But um, And this is sort of a developing situation at the Secretary of State's office, and they're going to get us more information. but. Again, and, and there may, I, I doubt there would be any sort of support for the programming end of it, but anything's possible. And by support, I'm talking about money from the state. Um, so I would be surprised if the programming got any of that. We might get something towards the actual purchase of the machine. Um, and, it's, and I think the machine, you know, I mean, besides the fact that we're being forced to do it, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> um, you know, and it will, I know, I know a bunch, not a bunch, but, 10 to 20 people in town that it will really help um, in terms of what we're doing now and that sort of stuff. And we have it and we rent it from the state for the state elections. Now they're requiring us to do it for our elections as well and then purchase it so that we have it, which is sort of a bummer. But that is... So that's a big chunk of that category. And then the other thing is I had previously in the last go round had money for what's an absentee ballot scanner that we have up on the stage so we don't have to clog the machine down here with absentee ballots and we can just process them all. You put a stack of a hundred of them in a scanner and it just goes gunk, 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 and cranks the ballots through. Um, so that was in the initial budget request, but then the Secretary of State and the Ballot Law Commission didn't want to approve anything before this election and probably won't within this budget. So that's a carryover from the last go-round, basically, in my world. 
Um, and trying to get all this under control is much like trying to nail jello to the wall. Um, <laughs> it is a tough thing to do, and it's one of the least favorite parts of my job is learning about all this stuff last minute and how did nobody know about this and that sort of stuff. But it is what it is, so here we are. So that is the big election news, so to speak. BB? Oh, nope, all good. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I'm not giving you a whole lot of choice on this no. one necessarily, but. <clears throat> no, I don't. Okay. The, the good news is that um, year over year, there's no increase. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, I mean, the, the reality is we're spending a lot on the elections, and I now again will say I will likely be back for the ballot <laughs> booths next go-round, um, because ours is hurting, and I hope I didn't do something tremendously stupid by not putting it in this budget, but I think we can make it through the stuff that we've got left okay. with what we've got. So, it may cobble together, but we can do it. So be, be ready for the uh, state elections in 26. Yes, okay. for sure. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else you'd like to talk about? How about tax collector? Oh, tax collector. Yeah, that. I mean, it's you, kind, it's kind of uneventful, but <laughs> <laughs> we should probably still do it. How's that side of your job going? <laughs> How's what? How's that side of your job going? Oh, that tried my job is going great. People are psyched about their taxes going up. <laughs> um, no, and, and they're really, truly in this budget. It's pretty unremarkable um, for all intents and purposes. Um, one of the things that I did do is I finally have given up on the fact that Diana and I both might be able to go to this conference. Um, so I'm pulling back some money from the conferences and training and travel and meals um, and not asking for that anymore because I just don't see a way that we could actually use that. And my office is calling me. Is the, is the new person that you're asked for under uh, town clerk, is that going to be split with tax collector again? Is that from a It will, program? but we've already, we've had that position under town clerk, but they will process some taxes, yes. But how we split that, I don't know <laughs> if we wanted to split it. I think okay. I think it's mo it should probably it's going to be mostly town clerk. So that's where it's sitting, and it's not going to. That's why there's nothing here. Right. Correct. Okay. Yes. That's okay. everything is on that one side because it just there's too much split. And it just gets confusing. Mm -hmm. Janet. No question. Okay. You're lucky, you know, right after lunch, we're really nice. Yeah, everybody <laughs> ready for a nap? <laughs> okay. Done? Yep, you. Uh, all welcome, right. Welcome to stay. Well, I cannot stay because I'm already being paged from down there that I need to come back. Okay. So I'm going to do that. But thank, thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank yes, you. I appreciate it, Tom, and, and everybody else. And also, Sarah, thank you for your AV help along the way, too. That's, yes. That's nowhere in your job to no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Like, I really am. But at a certain level, I've got to not blow myself out trying to do it. <laughs> and I'm not good at saying no, in case anybody <laughs> hasn't noticed. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Will. Okay, moving on then to finance. Yeah, we still. You want to do see? I go back to our. No, let's just finish these now. Okay. While we're while we're here, because we're right in the middle of finance anyway. So. Okay. Um. Sorry, I'm incredibly unorganized in my own department. <clears throat> uh, like get everybody else well, organized. We've already talked about it. It's two hours a week of increase in the. I, right. We. That's that's the that's the main thing is that I would like uh, two more hours on the. Um, part time that I have, and Anne, Anne does it right now, and Anne has she jumps back and forth great between departments. Um, but consistency is what I really need because I'd like to be able to have um, the person that I that I get for twelve hours own their own work, so that I'm not having to just piecemeal Anne work when when she's available. Um, she's great with Mondays; she takes care of payroll. But I'd like to see someone, maybe an accounts payable clerk you know, three days a week or four days a week for those 12 hours. Um, that's my, my biggest piece. Um, let me work down the list a little bit. Everything else is, is pretty static until you get to 
Um, where are we? Um, we're at the audit. I raised that a little bit, uh, not significantly. Um, we will have to do um, a full audit, a full actuarial audit, so that goes up a little bit, but, but not significantly. Um, computer support and maintenance covers a lot of, of the support and maintenance for the town. Um, and my budget software, I've put that into this, the one line item now rather than separating it out. Again, I think it, the understanding now is that we don't pay a ton for equipment we pay for the software where it used to be a computer cost you you know ten thousand dollars six thousand dollars that's that is nominal now and you pay for the software and you pay for the software every year so that that uh, amount has gone up i just got the numbers last night from vc3 for what the additional costs are going to be and my estimate is low by twelve hundred dollars so I will be adjusting that line item before the end of budget season. Um, so I don't think 1200 is, is too far off from my, my estimate of what we needed. Um, I have come down on office supplies because I think that the volatility of COVID has kind of gone away. The, the economy seems a little more stable, so we're not worrying that prices are going to, again, you know, astronomically spike. I think I'm pretty comfortable with that number coming down. Um, postage is <laughs> postage is postage, um, and I, that's handled for for anybody who mails anything from our offices. Um, and I think I think that kind of covers it. Why is that advertising down? Why is advertising down? Because we increased in my line. <laughs> Kim took the hit on that one. <clears throat> Um, advertising is actually, I level funded that, um, even though we went over in 2024, but Kim is going to be taking on some of that too. And advertising also includes all help wanted ads and anybody, any department that doesn't have their own advertising budget. Mm -hmm. So. Um, <clears throat> for the purposes of first timers. <clears throat> Again, the difference between computer support and computer license and fees. Computer support is the VC3 folks. Right. Computer support is uh, VC3 and any of our other vendors that we are able to call and, f you know, it's not working properly. Or can you walk me through this? Can you help me with this? Th those charges that we pay for that, it, the bulk of it is VC3. And Computer licenses are, for example, uh, Microsoft 365. They have to pay for one for every employee that is on, you know, on a computer. Um, Adobe, Avatar, um, any any um, any program that that we use, you pay a licensing fee, and that's what's included in that. And this sixty-four thousand dollars licensing fees, and those, all those. Office 365, Adobe, they're being used by every single department. You're just putting, instead of splitting them out in each department, you're putting it all under yours. No, some of them do get split out. There are there are some like uh, computer support, and when I get the bill, it's I have a spreadsheet formulated to determine which departments get how much based on employees and the cost of what type of subscription they have. So most of that does get split out within the departments. Um, I do cover, I think I cover rec, um, there's there's a couple that that I do cover for, um, but not all departments. So this fifty six two fifty you say is going to increase by twelve hundred. Um, it's going to be split between the two lines. Oh. I just don't know where yet. I just know the overall number was I was low by twelve hundred about twelve hundred dollars. Lynn, is Mike Williams still helping at all, <laughs> volunteering at all? Yes. Yes, he is. Um, as a matter of fact, he was part of the the reason I didn't get the quote before I put all these numbers together is that he was working with them on what he wants replaced this time around. Um, he has some server requests. Uh, some st I know they're worked kind of thinking about getting things into the cloud. So he has been working with them over the last few months to, to work on that piece of it. And that delayed a little bit in getting me my other numbers. <clears throat> OK, 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Moving on. Um, assessment. Assessors. Okay. So assessors, we have Tri-Town Assessing. <clears throat> so we pay our portion of the Tri-Town Assessing budget. <clears throat> like our sewer payments to Sunapee, we have to guess six, per six months of the year. <clears throat> so we estimate that that budget should go up about 6%. We pay based on numbers of parcels. Then the tax map update, that's a yearly expense to keep our tax maps up to date. So, does Sunapee still have the most <coughs> parcels? <coughs> yep. Then us, then Newberry? Yep. And it's very little change. I think Sunapee maybe added 20 more lots, and we have a couple, but okay. it's pretty stable percentage wise. Thank you. And we still like that whole arrangement? Right town arrangement? We do. And in fact, from what I'm hearing around the state, it's harder and harder to find people in the assessing uh, line of work and having companies like Avatar take on towns. It's more and more difficult. I have no idea what the state's going to do as this situation gets even worse. Um, the state used to do assessing back in the 80s and prior. I can't imagine they would start doing it again. They don't have enough help there either. Um, <clears throat> so it's, I think it's a real, real issue as to where we're going to get people who have that expertise um, to do that job. It's not something that you can hire somebody and train them in six months or a year to do it. It's, so, yeah, we're very fortunate to have um, this system set up with a three-town share. The, the property owners in New London, Sunapee, and Newbury have pretty much easy access um, to an assessor to talk about things, which is why we have <clears throat> fewer abatements. Uh, we do have one ab three abatements this year and one that went to Superior Court for a total of four. But given the number of parcels we have um, and the fact that we just did the reval, that's not out of line at all. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good st it continues to be a good value of tax money. Okay. And, and does Newberry <clears throat> still handle payroll for Joe? And yeah, they act as the employer for purposes of paying uh, pl paying the wages, unemployment, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Okay. Okay, baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speaking of uh, going to court, legal. Yep. So legal has been going up. Um, I, the biggest areas, well, the biggest areas I think are contract review. Um, Primex uh, does an initial review of our contracts. Um, they are really making sure that their member towns have contracts reviewed because more and more uh, vendors are trying to shift liability from themselves to the municipalities. And obviously, Primex, as our insurer, is going to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we're spending more time having contracts reviewed um, by town council. And then there's a negotiation to try and get the contracts where we can sign them. Um, so that's one increase. And, pay, and, and employment things. When we have employment issues, they can be long-term um, and they're very expensive. We do have, and when we purchase land, the, you know, the Conservation Commission's still trying to buy the land at Low Plains. That's been three plus years. I didn't, um, I don't expect we'll have much more legal expense. That's been over $10,000 to date. To buy a piece of land is just unbelievable. I mean, I, having this go on for three years is unbelievable. I know the Conservation Commission's really getting has been, I shouldn't say they're getting frustrated, they've been frustrated for two and a half years um, of this. So, but from all, from all we are hearing, we're getting close on that. So while we'll have some more legal expense in that, uh, for that project, it should be nearing the end. What kind of contracts is Primex reviewing for us? Any, any contracts we have. So for example, most recently, the contract to try and get um, a consultant to do the asset management plan for the buildings. We couldn't come to an agreement with the consultant that had agreed to do the work um, where they would change the contract the way Primex and town council wanted it. So we didn't enter into a contract with them. But anytime we enter into a contract for anything, um, the purchase of property, um, work, the kind of work we have done in this building um, goes through Primex first, and then this, assuming the vendor doesn't want to immediately change to go along with what Primex wants, then we send it to town council for them to do negotiation and try and get it where both parties can be happy. 
but in, in years back, you know, past years, this wasn't such a big deal, but trying to transfer liability on to someone else, and you can see why the vendors will want to do it, the consultants, you know, if they can get us to take all of the liability on, um, it's cheaper for them, so. Maybe. Personnel administration. Okay, so much of that is the library. We get reimbursed for that. That's the place um, where their insurance, dental, Medicare, all of that is in there. The leave time buyout, as I mentioned earlier, we're zeroing that out and recommend that we do the expendable trust funds so it doesn't have to be appropriated every year. The only time you'll need to appropriate more money into the fund is if an employee leaves and their buyout cannot be absorbed in their regular budget. So let's say we had somebody leave. We'll use Lynn. Lynn's not going anywhere, but say she did. I won the um, lottery. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we would have to pay out her unused vacation time. And if we didn't hire her replacement for a couple of months, which would never happen because I wouldn't be doing it, but <laughs> there could potentially be money in the budget to pay the leave time buyout. Right, so this leave time buyout is when somebody leaves and it can't be absorbed in their budget, whatever budget the person came from. And I think it's a good idea. That way the, the funds don't lapse. Like the money in these accounts laps at the end of the year. An expendable trust fund, it won't lapse. So the first deposit in that fund is going to be a separate warrant article? Yep. So. Yeah, we'll have to create the so expendable looks, trust. It looks like we just saved 10000 but we haven't saved it at all, right? Just coming out of a different pocket. That's right. Uh, okay. But I'm going to take the savings anyway. And it might, yeah, you might even want to increase it. Oh, we can just, yeah. yeah. But you could start out, and then you can build up over years if you want. Uh, and the tuition reimbursement, you know, there again, continue to try and get people to, to take classes, but I don't think you should zero it out. Um, <clears throat> yep. It at least shows some support for that program. Maybe. Nope, no questions. Okay, okay. Adam, you're up. <clears throat> Last but not least. From A to Z, Adam to Z zoning. All right. He'll also do CIP. You want him to start no, with no, CIP? No, no, just do the budget, your budget stuff first. It's easy. It's all on one page. Page five. <laughs> All right, so as Bill mentioned, uh, my budget is relatively straightforward. <laughs> um, it covers uh, three individual um, sections, the planning board, the zoning board, and the planning and zoning administrator. Um, overall, 2.4% uh, increase, which is uh, basically represented by the increases to the um, employee salary and benefits lines. Um, other than that, the only uh, increase, I believe, was the reference materials, which covers the cost of the land use law books for our planning board members, our zoning board members, and town staff. Um, and that was an increase of $5 um, <laughs> based on this year's uh, purchase price of $10 per book. Um, other than that, it's a fairly straightforward budget. We have changed a little bit with our advertising. Um, Due to the change in the circulation of the intertown inter record um, to meet the RSA for um, advertising in a newspaper of general circulation, we now need to advertise in the Valley News um, as a daily delivery newspaper. Um, so we uh, we think you know we've had a few months now where we've sort of been hitting both of them. The Valley News uh, structure is different than the Intertown Records payment structure. Um, so we have a few months examples now. They it's based on line um, versus the the flat fifty six dollar fee of the Intertown Records advertising. So it's one where we think it'll come out just about the same um, overall um, because there's. There's not an individual fee with multiple public hearings that fall in the same advertisement like there was um, with the intertown. So it's a different structure. You know, we don't really, until we have a full year, know exactly uh, what that will look at. But I think if we keep it even, um, but that's one variable in this year's. Um, other than that, there's not any any significant changes. Bibi? No questions. Yeah. 
Well, this is, should, should, this is CIP might after, be more fun. <laughs> after, after, afternoon, <laughs> afternoon problems? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's okay. good. Yeah. Actually, by, by design, we, we left this part of the budget for now because we didn't think there were going to be lots of issues yeah. or discussions. So, <laughs> um, okay. So you want to do the CIP while you're sitting there? Sure do. Um, so I did bring copies if anybody um, wants narrative or the spreadsheet. Um, sure, if you'd like. Um, so this was the first year that we were able to do the CIP in Questica, obviously. Um, which <laughs> getting up and running maybe was a little delayed. However, I think it will be a huge improvement in coming years. Um, it certainly made my life uh, 10 times easier not having to reformat the Excel spreadsheet every time we had uh, some sort of a change. Um, so hopefully next year will be even better. Um, that being said, it does look a little bit different. Um, things are organized um, in a slightly different manner uh, than purely on a departmental basis because they tie back into the budget. Um, and so whereas we would have just captured everything in one department, now some things within an individual department are broken up um, in there. So this year on the committee, we had uh, Tim Parity, Paul Gorman, Paul Vance, Charlie Kelsey, and B.B. Casey. Um, and so we had a good cross-section representation from planning board, budget, and selectmen. Um, and the planning board adopted it this past Tuesday night. Um, so it is, it is all approved at this point. Uh, let's hit some main highlights here. Um, I think most of you in this room have sat through this uh, spiel in one meeting or another in the last month, so um, I will try to hit, hit some of the highlights. But um, in Public Works Department, we have uh, reorganized the sidewalk plan and the proposal. Um, we spent, Sam and I spent a fair amount of time with him um, redoing the, uh, the six-year plan for when the sidewalks would be addressed and the sequence in which they would be addressed and then adjusting the scope of each project to be more or less uh, a similar length. You know, it's not possible to, to bring them all to the exact same and still break at, <laughs> at reasonable points, um, but they are, they're more equal than maybe they were in previous portions. Um, for the most part, they represent uh, repair and improved condition to existing sidewalks, with the one exception being the south side of Main Street um, in the area of Parkside to Pearl, um, actually including a sidewalk along Main Street from um, Parkside to uh, Bonin's architectural firm. So in front of the orthodontist, the Bonanno, and the Bonin's property is really the missing link of the sidewalk there. Um, and that is five years out, I believe, was that. Um, from other public works items, uh, there were some years that were adapted. You know, Sam covered the, the conversation on the grader earlier, so that was um, one thing that was addressed, a, a mower, um, but really just minor modifications in the year that they appear or the, uh, the dollar amount attached. Um, similar story for the fire department. There was um, some changes to the, the cost of apparatus or the years that they were slated based on um, slight tweaks to what the actual project was, uh, refurbishment versus replacement, more or less. Um, the police department appears in here um, again. The going to the software, we had to change the format a little bit. We had left um, previous CIPs a, a little bit more open-ended on the cost due to the ability to just put a, a range into Excel. We can't put a range into the, the financial software, so we had to be more concrete on numbers, which um, nicely coincided with getting some new numbers from the uh, police subcommittee. Um, there's still obviously some variable there to figure out um, you know, when the upfront costs for planning and design versus construction and do you include soft costs and the, the capital um, portion of that um, so they're not you know, on the nose to what the, uh, the numbers from a couple of weeks ago um, at the police committee meeting are, but they do reflect uh, those estimates. And 
one major, semi-major, I would say, um, item to turn your attention to is the Energy Committee's inclusion this year. Um, in order to achieve their goal of being renewable by 2030, um, there are some projects that need to be undertaken. The buyout of the, um, the solar field lease and, um, and the, uh, the stump dump solar array, uh, and uh, then the sort of blanket what else we have to accomplish that I don't think they have quite um, determined yet in order to hit the 100% renewable by 2030. Um, and those will come with a fairly significant cost, so they wanted to get some numbers in here now, even if they don't have all of the details so that you are, are aware of what's coming down the pipeline. But I think that's sort of the, the high level view. Happy to take any questions. Or if, if BB, do you have anything from committee to add or, okay. So um, <clears throat> I guess I'm the one person who hasn't been through, <laughs> through this that probably in the room here. Um, and I guess the question is, did the committee uh, concern itself with the issue of additional town office space in this 10-year period. Uh, we talked about that a bit at the selectmen's meeting last night. Um, we've had several examples here today of additional warm bodies. They're going to have to have places to sit and so on. So did you all consider a placeholder for that somewhere? We did not. I mean, I don't think those conversations are far enough along at this point to be concrete enough to include, um, but certainly that's that's part of why we do this every year so that hopefully when we're, you know, in June of next year, we have some of that a little bit more concrete and we can, we can include it in the next go around. Okay. Um, and that, that's sometimes the hardest part with CIP is it can, it can even feel like, you know, this budget process starts so early, but in order to get you the CIP by now, we're, I start pestering the department heads end of May, early June. Um, and so they're putting their information into me typically in July. Um, and so it sort of backs up the, the time frame even more. So then on the last page, uh, just to acknowledge to, to, the, to, to Richard and Tom that the, the, all the library's numbers have just been put in here as requested, is that? Uh, correct, and I'm sorry that I, that I skipped the library. No, those were, um, Richard spent a lot of time adjusting them. Um, but those are the same numbers, like without my going looking at the other piece of paper? Yes, yeah. yep, yeah. Richard and I worked together and he came and presented to the committee. And then I note that your, the uh, purchase of land for Conservation Commission You've simply put that out at the end, but not, not in line with what they asked for. Uh, so th this is in line with what they have uh, requested the, the committee, um, you know, not knowing exactly what piece of land um, might come down the line at some point. They, they feel like they wanted to, and this has been probably the last four years, I think that this is how they've done it, that there's going to be some ask for land at some point over the next 10 years and to sort of, sort of put in this generic um, expectation that they would like us to put in at the end of the plan. But the Conservation Commission has regularly asked for it to be funded annually along the way, and in fact, we had to adjust the capital budget last year. And I think they, again, in some piece of paper in here, have asked for regular funding, and you all, are, in doing this, have rejected that request? I I don't think that's a, a conclusion. I think the, the CIP um, committee, you know, doesn't see it as necessarily their responsibility to figure out how the funding um, is appropriated, whether it be, um, you know, through a, a regular budget item or through a capital reserve, but simply to educate on that's the million dollars in there is what the, the Conservation Commission sees themselves Spending. as needing. Okay, because this is not a funding document. Right. Um, then, then last but not least, uh, Chief Lyon, um, you've moved a tanker up two years from last time the CIP was done. Um, yes, sir. Could you talk to that, please? Absolutely. Um, our current tanker is from 1998. Uh, this piece of equipment was scheduled to be replaced in fiscal year 2028. 
um, with the new federal emissions standards that are going to be coming uh, down the road in 2027. Uh, a bunch of the truck manufacturers are making the recommendation to purchase them prior to the new federal emission standards taking place. Instead of, t for instance, today, if we were to purchase a tanker, it's going to be anywhere from four hundred and fifty to to five hundred thousand dollars. Instead of waiting and spending, and incrementally, it's it's always gone up in between three and seven percent, and now it's more that that five or or higher percent since COVID and things have um, leveled off, uh, we're making the recommendation to re-chassis the tanker. What does that mean? Uh, our body, which was manufactured by Valley Fire Equipment, uh, that will, uh, if approved, that will be removed from the current chassis and it will be installed on a new cabin chassis um, so the body's made out of plastic so it obviously the the biggest issue for us is corrosion and this will um, in turn and, and we're hoping for right around two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars for the total cost but being unsure uh, asking for 300 so this should save the town uh, between two hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, if this project moves forward. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Sorry, just catching up with the rest of you. BB, you better not have any questions. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, do you have any? Okay. Thank you. Do you want to do? Um, Executive, and then we'll talk about capital transfers and that sort of thing. Okay, so your budget. So we're back to page one. Page one. Hold on. Notable changes, I would say, would be. Let, let, let me let, us, let me just. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Uh, notable changes. I would recommend you increase advertising. Uh, by two, three, two hundred and fifty dollars. I continue to hear people who say that they're not uh, well informed. So I, th I think that you know the continuation of using print ad, which is fairly costly, um, we can't escape that. For a while there, we were trying to do most by municipal matters and um, and those kinds of things, free outlets. But I really think that to the extent people want to keep informed, we should be using the. Um, Valley News and, and the Intertown. We can use the Intertown for your ads, um, but as people get more used to using the Valley News for um, the legal ads, we may as well use that as well. We also you know, can use the Messenger, but I really think that we continue to hear people saying they didn't know such and such was going on, and I don't know. Um, so that would be one. Also, the uh, your selectman's discretionary account, which continues to be overspent, I always suggest you increase it, but. Um, that's up to you. You can transfer money in. That's the fund you used for the holiday party, things like Coalition 2.0, when you want to continue doing that. If you do special studies on things um, that you haven't um, budgeted for, the um, gatherings that you hold at Colby Sawyer, the room rental, food, advertising, that's kind of your catch-all. So that's actually your your budget to spend, so either increase it a little bit or transfer other places. Well, using Sam's anal uh, analog, uh, uh, um, three three most recent years, we should have twenty thousand dollars in there, not fifteen. So fifteen's oh. probably. Stone. I didn't think you were actually going to go for the fifteen, but hey, if you want to go twenty or twenty-five, I'll, I would. No, no, I'm just uh, yeah. Look, look. I mean, you said we always overspend it, and so for the benefit of the. Taping and for our discussion, uh, Sam. Yeah, so we don't have uh, his the budget. Went back and took the most recent three years and took the average, and the average for our th last three years for this account has been well, twenty thousand dollars a year, and we've been. Um, we only have two years. I was going to look say, at. yeah, we, we only have two years to look that at. That twenty twenty five number isn't. I got twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. What's twenty two? Oh yeah, oh, that's actual. the first one. Thirteen. Oh, there it is. Fourteen thousand. Yeah. Fifteen thirty-two. Yeah. So. So, um, and we've been budgeting five thousand, and so, you know, I think if we're, 
I, I, I would uh, suggest this number ought to be 20,000. Okay. Just for discussion, uh, of course. <clears throat> Having said that, Bibi? I, I have a st stupid question. Uh, Lynn, when, when you put in the history into the new software, you're just putting numbers in. So, like, going forward, you're going to be able to click on that $3,775, and it's going to tell you exactly who payments went to. But right now, you can't That's click correct. on the 32. Right, because for the previous years, it was loaded into Questica no, as no, a no, solid no. number. Yeah. Is that yeah. easy for you to... Um, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I would just... I would just think it would be nice for us to be able to give kind of a, a history of the, the items yeah, that right. this is being spent on. Yeah, I can I can run that report for the last three years and then sort it by vendor and then you can see what you, what you've what's been hitting there. But since I'm spending wildly okay. here, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah. excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Full transparency. You're absolutely right. Yep. But I mean, I, I do think that it's interesting to look back and say, yeah, why have we left this number where it is, yeah. other than because we yeah. were trying to make cuts that yeah. just because we wanted to. Yeah. You got anything else on this one? Nope. Do you? I do. Last year, we only increased the moderator's salary by $1,000 because we were trying to do it in two-year bite to get him up to the same level as other comparable oh. jobs. And it seems to me we need to move that to the $5,000 now to do what we said we were going to do last year. Yeah, we can increase that. Don't, don't know. I mean, probably a year when he's working as hard as he is, that's going to be easily received. But um, it is something we talked about last year. We said we were yep. not, we were going to do it in two one-year bites. Yep. Agreed. OK. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. I said that. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. My ear, my hearing wasn't as good there as it was on some of the other side. Okay, so that takes care of all of the operating budget pages except for ca capital transfers, right? You know, Have we done all of the pages? Do we go through debt service? I know you briefed them earlier. She Any said questions on that? Lynn said debt service. That was the original it's, it's summary? A, it, it's a given. You want to look over any of the uh, Well, I think we're no? going to come back to debt capacity somewhere before we're done here. But that, all, all I think you've done so far is tell us where we stand with what, we, what we've already committed to. Is right, right, what you're committed to right now. So, anybody want to take a post-lunch break before we dive into capital? No, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we're not coming back. Jen, Janet wants yeah. to dive in. Okay. I'm trying to. I need to find it. First. I don't have anything to put on the screen. That's going to be in sections. Do you have a we way have you want to approach this, or you want us to dive in? I mean, I can. I can show you capital outlays, but that's not what you're going for right now, right? Because no, capital think, outlays matches the yeah, no, we CIP. Don't CIP matches the CI matches the CIP, which I think totals a million two seventy five. Is that right? It doesn't really matter. That's going to go out if we approve those expenditures. Where we get the money from is still up for grabs, right? Because some of the accounts are going to have to have some money put in them. Yep. Um, so last year I said. Let's do a million and sort of catch up from the COVID years. And I think I warned us, <coughs> excuse me, tight. <laughs> Thank you. That we were probably going to get closer to a million four, a million five going forward because of the projects that are going to be there. That's just, but if we look at the individual accounts, we don't have um, the sheet, do we, that shows the balances in the accounts now, uh, Lynn? Do we have that available or? 
Um, correct. That was not included in your budget packets. Okay, so I, I have some notes that I think approximate what's there. Okay. For the, for the energy thing, we agreed last year that we would wait until they told us what the final number was going to be for, because the, the timing is going to be, I think, in a, in a January period. But assuming this number they have in the CIP is close to being right, is that, a, is that when you did the CIP, was that? Updated. This is their best best number now. Mm -hmm. So they have one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars now, and they need um, three hundred to do this project, buy this system. So they need another one hundred and sixty-five thousand oh, dollars. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Correct. Am I correct? Yep. Uh, so they're, they're 450,000, right? Is that what we've got? We've got 135. I, you, probably have, oh. you probably have it with interest added on. I don't. Nope. Nope. I have it at 135 balance as of June 30th. So we need 165 more to buy out that system, right? Is my arithmetic okay? 300 minus 135 is 165. Oh, okay. Yes. You're, I'm, I'm looking at the total number, but yes, that is but correct. That, that, some of these things we've already talked about. Now we're going to pay for them. Correct. Like the moderator salary, it was something we talked about last year and put off until this year. And when you put things off, then you have to pay for them. So I think there's 165 for that project. For the other solar project, um, I have forgotten the terms of that. Have they got, actually gotten the grant yet? I, I do not know that answer. Kim says no. So at least on my sheet, I got to put down. We need to talk to the energy committee some more about where that, that project stands. That was 150, right? Uh, according to this, well, they got yeah, 150, yeah. For the stump dump one, right? Stump dump one. Yeah. There, there was a grant involved right. and so on. But I'm asking whether or not we know, in fact, that that's going to be a 26 project. I mean, it's here for 26, mm -hmm. but I haven't heard anything about it since. They, since we rushed to put the grant in. Yep. So I'm, I'm putting down as a question, I'm putting down 165 for sure for the work that's already been done and another 150 that we've got to ask about. Yep. Okay, just continuing on my little homework sheet here. The fire breathing apparatus. Um, We've known that one was coming along the pike, and um, we've got two, approximately 283,000 of the 350. Is that right, Lynn? We have, uh, after I put in this year, yeah. um, we'll have two, it, I have 296. Okay, so we need another 54,000 for that? Correct. This is, this is just to pay for what we know we're going to do. This is, is going to be in and out stuff. And for the tanker, we have 305,000 plus whatever you've got for this year. Right, we go in and out this year. 250 goes in and. Um, well, we haven't put any. Right, it will go in and money will come out. We haven't so. put anything in yet. For 2025, we'll be putting in. Two, though, for Yep, time. yep. You, Sorry. This, this year, year, I know. You it's, define, which is we're time traveling. Yep. Um, yes, so so we'll end up with 292 when that 275 uh, comes That one's going to do. have to be the same exactly, 292 also? Um, yeah, that's what my balance will be at 2025, 292. And then. What's the one for the, what's the, one for the equipment going to be then? There are two numbers there. One's for breathing equipment, one's for. Engines. The fire breathing equipment is 296. Oh, and this one's going to be 294. This one's going to be 292. Oh, just and then we've got the 275 coming out, and I do have the the lease payment for the tr for the truck we have, engine two, um, of 132.303. So we will, in 2026, we will have a shortfall of 115,000 and That's change. Good. That's the number you're going for, right? 115. Okay, <laughs> fire. Yep. So 9, 14, carry the 1, 12, 13, carry the 1. So there's 334,000 so far that we have to do just to pay the bills, right? 
Correct. What was that again? Bill three. Three hundred sixty-five for yep. solar, fifty-four for yep. breathing equipment, one fifteen for the tanker and the uh, lease payment on the ladder. For a total of three thirty-four. Three thirty-four. Um, okay. The next one is sidewalks. Uh, and for 26, we only need 60. Is that right? And we've got 183 in there, plus whatever you've got for earnings. Or addition, 183 versus 60, is that right? Right, and then we're, we're adding 50,000 in 25. So we'll land at 204, they'll take the 60 out, we still have 144. So we are okay on sidewalks right now. And 144 is even enough for 27. That is correct. We'd be left with 22,000 after that. So if we didn't want to, we could get through two more years without putting any more money in there. That is correct. But also, also remember, we've committed 120,000 in a previous town meeting. Yeah. That's been pulled out of this balance already, so yeah. there is there is money for a previous commitment. Right. Oh, okay. And I don't know where that Sam's going to use that. That Sam might use. Okay. So I'm going to so there's not, nothing. Some of the amount in there was going to be used in this budget in fiscal year 25. Yeah. I was going to request yeah, the money right. in the spring so that we could do the first that stretch of right. phase 20. one, so to say. Excellent. Yeah. So See, at we least, talked about this. At least, yeah, at least from a. Uh, planning point of view, we, we might want to put money in there. We don't have to. Is correct. that fair? That is correct. Okay. Okay. Moving speedily along at this hour. <laughs> uh, for the library, what, show, what balance do you show? <laughs> Heading into 2026, they show a balance of $65,000. That's with 60 going in, 60 coming out. I don't know if they're going to use the full 60 for 2025. Um, if they don't, they have a little extra left. Um, and then the 60 coming out, the balance would be $5,500. Okay, so again, we don't have to do anything to meet. You don't have to. Okay. But the following year, you'll end oh, yeah. up with a deficit. <laughs> yeah, but we got some big numbers left, left yep. to go here. So. Yep. Um, and then... For the DPW equipment, there's the big numbers. You've done the, that arithmetic. We've got a backhoe. Right. Keep in mind that I did pull out of my number here the agricultural tractor that Sam's going to rent for the month instead of purchasing. So okay, good. that money is out of here. So he's going to take two sixty-eight out. Correct. That will leave him with sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> Why only that? I get a bigger number. Uh, because we are spending this year. We have this. We're, we have four hundred and ninety-one thousand that is committed for this year. If you know when the when the trucks come in, the we uh, dump, uh, dump truck. Okay, but still enough for the now. Now that we're not doing the agricultural. Oh yeah, you'll end. Up, you'll end up with with sixty grand left at the end of twenty twenty six if you don't put anything into this account. Okay, and I guess that's, that's it, isn't it? Uh, sewer. Oh, sewers, okay. Um, so sewer's a slightly different animal, but yep. It is, and it's, it's in a different position than the rest of DPW in that um, at current levels, the spending for this year will put it in a deficit of $65,000 and change. So 65.5. So we're going to need 220 some thousand dollars for sewer just to get break even? No, that 65.5 is at the end of, of fiscal year 26. Okay. You yep. You're saying this year. I, I'm sorry. In my head, it's working. <laughs> but so yes, at the need, end of. We need 65. 65.5, correct. 65 for sewer. So essentially, we need four hundred thousand just to meet. Yes. If we agree with all the CIP numbers. Right, just to keep everything in a positive by the end of twenty six, four hundred thousand dollars would do that. Okay. So then, it seems to me we then have to go and start filling up the tank again, 
And that's what I think how I ended up with thinking we we're going to be close to a million four because I think we look at 27 and 28 and we're trying to build back up. Right. We've got some big numbers there. We've got some buildings, some transfer station, mm -hmm. some uh, police communications equipment, sidewalk, more sidewalks, more library. So I would suggest at this point, so running to see how the totals are looking, that we put a million four in there where there's nothing right now on the sheet and then spend some time between now and the time we turn this over to the budget committee thinking about how we would allocate. <coughs> okay. All I've done there is satisfy myself. Okay. And I haven't heard you yell at me yet. But that's about the level we're going to need. If we do all these projects that are in the CIP, and that doesn't include doing anything about the $150,000 solar project. So that might have to be put into that million. But the, the timing of that and the amount seems to me to still be very much in doubt compared to these other numbers. And in terms of the police station, it's, that's, that's going to be bonded. Oh, so we don't need to put it in true. the operating budget. Okay. I think mm. yeah. we're definitely bonding it, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll get I'll get some some rates what the the bond bank is estimating yeah, for well you to use for rates and uh, back in the May or something you gave me some numbers that I did that uh, added um, I think forty eight cents to the tax rate but you'd have to back into right what that means in terms of the actual debt service numbers correct but I think you've got to. We got to bring those out now, and okay, I will get those. Get them, get them there. Then the question is: Is there anything else that we should be thinking about in terms of expenditures that aren't in the operating budget? The warrant article will have articles. Will have the signs are going to be what? The forty thousand dollars for the historic markers. Historic markers are going to be forty thousand. Um, 10,000 plus, so, so we say $15,000 for the expendable trust. 15, yep. No? I'd like to come in at 20. 20,000 for the expendable trust. Do I hear 25? 30. I'll take 30. 30. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, I'm the one we're trying to understand not just what goes into the pink sheet or the yellow sheet, but what else is going to be seen on the warrant when we get done. Uh, another operating thing that we might see is the improvements to the website, which could be 25,000 plus or minus. It's a good thing we do this on a Friday, right? Everybody gets to spend the yeah, weekend no, thinking no, about all this. I think, you know, what we're trying to do at this point, at least what I'm trying to do, is to take your yellow sheet and update it with things that you don't have on there yet. Yeah. So I'm the, thinking... The health insurance number is not on this yellow sheet. No, that, 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 she'll put that in, but at least there's a line for that already. Yeah, in the COLA, that's uh, another thank thing. Thank you, that's what I was going to say next. Um, if we were to use the same methodology that we've tried to use for the last two years for the COLA and try, and, and try to be consistent rather than be doing what's comfortable, we're probably at 3%. 
that's based on? That's based on the New England CPI, uh, which we will only know in November what it is for the period that we want. Right? Yeah, early December, because we use November. We use November numbers, which are available in early December. Yeah. And uh, Lynn has calculated that would be $112,000 more. And I think we ought to put that in here, either as you've done in the past as part of executive, or if you want to go spread it out already, go ahead. However you want to see it. I would spread it out so we see, okay. see it. Yeah, that actually helps when we finally land the budget and start spending it. I get a lot of panicked calls from department heads, like, I'm overspending this line. I'm like, yeah, but it's down here. So <laughs> I'll, I'll feed it out into all the departments at 3%. I think we 3%. need at this point to, before we okay. make any decisions to see what this might look like. Okay. Okay, B. Mm-hmm. Now, can we talk about what I gave you last night on Buker? Can we, can, can we give that number to the police committee? I know you haven't looked at the details, but can we, we be happy telling them that the Buker, cost of Buker for a police station would be something in the order of $6 million? I think I want more time to ponder what you did. Okay, but, but their meeting is before we meet again. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. But I, mean, I don't think you're going to end up with something bigger than that. You might come up with something smaller because you think my no. moving them in and out and so on is, is, is outrageous, but. No, I don't think I would come don't, up don't with Don't look at the other three columns. That's just. Yeah, I know. Just the, this just column. A, just A. I don't, I actually don't think I would come in. I think it, I actually think it is maybe a little higher. Based on some of the stuff that Tony was saying when he was talking about, when he and LaValle Brenzinger were talking about the, the significant upgrades that have to be done for security and things like that, I actually think it would be a little higher than this. Okay. Don't think it would be lower. So would we be happy saying to the police advisory committee that you believe that Buker will minimum. be a minimum of $6 million? Minimum, yeah. And then we'd be happy to validate that with more numbers and more asterisks and more <laughs> resources? Yeah. But you, uh, we're not overstating it. I don't think we're overstating it. No. Okay. So can we tell that committee for the next meeting that we, th we give them the, the million the numbers add up to 6.2 million and mm -hmm. say we think it might be more but we would need input from colliers as to whether we have enough in there for security and stuff mm -hmm. my, my problem with that bb is i don't know how you build security on this site oh, well that's why i think <laughs> the numbers would go so high well but but the question is i mean the, just to talk it through a bit why but putting this more, more in there is, into we're chain link fences and yeah Okay, but I mean, I, what I was trying to do was the internal side yep. of the building, which mm -hmm. has built in their locks and extra walls in the front places and mm -hmm. um, elevators and all that stuff. But I just, my mind blew thinking about peripheral stuff, you know, a chain link fence along Siemens Road and out into the you know, green and so on. So I, I did not include, you're right, that's not there. <laughs> and I don't think it was there for Myers. I don't think it was there for Harriman. I don't think um, seriously that uh, any of the drawings we've seen from LBA that they put any of that security there because they basically, both Harriman and LBA said, that's not the place to do it. Yep. But, but if we could certainly, I think, say that, at least for me, I would say, if we stayed here, you, we would have to figure out how to do that too, and that would probably take another order of magnitude of discussion, I think. Yep. Yeah. You're looking at the internal space cost. Yeah, because, well, because in, in one of my, one of the asterisk dude notes there, it says this does not include security for the outside. Right. Oh, less security costs. I got, yep, you're right, 15% deduction. Yeah. 
I mean, <clears throat> n none of us have contemplated what that would look like or what it would cost. <laughs> Look good. <laughs> well, I don't know. But I mean, we're, we're trying to be as cooperative as possible in providing the information um, so that the residents, the people who have to vote on this, will know if they're voting on the proposal, the numbers that LBA has come up with um, versus staying here with the whole deficiency. What's it look like? Well, probably looks like six plus million dollars here, with emphasis, I think, on the plus. <laughs> right? Yep. And the, and the plus comes from what do you do with the site? Because the inside of the building is still going to be, have the same walls around, except for the extra second floor of the sally port that, I, that we put in there. Mm -hmm. There's no other space to build. <laughs> Okay, it is. Could we address one more thing, Bill? Sure. Two seconds. It's kind of budget related. Okay, we're um, done with that su subject. Though. That subject. Oh, this is a completely new subject. Okay. Kind of budget related. Um, I'll ask Adam to, we need a, an appointee to the TAC committee. Yes, so um, the TAC, which is the Transportation Advisory Committee of the Upper Valley Lake Sunapee Regional Planning Commission, um, which is the... Um, the entity that reviews all the projects in the state 10-year plan. Um, when Bob left, his appointment went with him. Um, and so I took Sam to the Planning Commission a couple weeks ago to meet the director, um, and we would like him to be the new member on the TAC committee, um, which just takes a, a motion of your support to appoint him to the TAC committee. He does. <laughs> he's been assigned. Does he have a choice? He, he's been assigned the task. <laughs> they meet the same night as the planning board, so unfortunately, I'm I'm busy. But only <laughs> only if uh, Main Street is moved up in the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> One vote of motion. fifty-two. <laughs> motion to appoint Sam to the TAC. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You. Anything else? Okay, well, we are about half an hour ahead of schedule. Do you mind going home? No. <laughs> Motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nice job, all.